What's up internet? Welcome back once again. I am Manish from rebellionrider.com. Today's PL SQL tutorial is all about collection method limit. We have already seen four functions in this collection method series that are count, exist, first and last. Limit is the fifth function which we will be learning today. So ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts because this flight is ready to take off. Before that, do make sure to smash that thumbs up button and like the video. That's to keep the captain of this flight motivated for doing more such interesting videos. And if you are new here, then be sure to subscribe because here we make learning SQL, PLSQL and Oracle database fun. So let's start the tutorial. But before we jump on to the example, let me quickly tell you a bit about the collection method limit. Collection method limit, which is actually a PL SQL function, returns the maximum number of elements that a VRA can hold. This means that by using this function, you can find out how many elements you can store in a VRA. Let's understand this using an example. Here I declared a VRA with the name in block underscore VRY, which can hold five elements of number data type. In the next line, we initialize the VRA in block underscore VRY using the collection variable VRY underscore OBJ. Let's move ahead. Here we have the execution section. Inside this section, we have an output statement which will return the total number of indexes that we have in our VRA. On execution, this statement should return 5. So let's execute. Here is the result which is 5. This result of limit function shows that the maximum strength of our VRA is 5. You must be thinking that don't we have the function count which gives the same information? Hmm, I can see you guys have been paying attention. I like it. Anyways, let's modify the above code and see what happens if we use function count here. Let's execute. What happened here? While the function limit returned 5, yet function count returned 0. Let me explain it to you. The collection function limit returns the total number of indexes of a VRA regardless of whether these indexes are empty or holding some data. It checks the definition of the VRA and sees the total number of elements it is designed to store and return that number. While the collection function count returns the number of indexes which are not empty and holding some data. And according to the definition of our VRA in block underscore VRY, it is clear that it can hold 5 elements. That is why the result of collection function limit is 5. But since we haven't stored any data into our VRA, hence all the indexes of the VRA in block underscore VRY is empty. That is the reason why the collection function count returns 0 as the result. Let's store some value into this VRA and see what then will be the result of both these collection functions. Here, first using collection procedure extend, we allotted the memory space and append an element to the VRA. And in the next line, we stored a numeric value into the first index of our VRA. Don't be confused about the collection procedure extend as we will be discussing that in the future video very soon. For now, let's execute this PL SQL program and see the result. Here is our result. Result from function limit is still 5 because that is the total strength of our VRA. But the result from the function count is now 1 and not 0. 
This is because this time the total number of indexes which are holding some data in this vary is 1. Hope now the concept of collection function limit is clear to you as well as you have understood the difference between the collection methods count and limit. Now the next question is can we use the collection method limit with nested tables? To answer this question I have a PL SQL block here. In this program everything is the same except this time we have used limit function with nested table instead of VRAs. The name of this nested table is my underscore nested underscore table and it is again capable of holding elements of number data type. We have also initialized this nested table using collection variable var underscore anti and stored 10 numeric values into it. In the execution section we have two output statements. The first output statement will show you the result returned from the collection function limit and the second output statement will show you the result from the count function. Let's execute this program and see the result. As you can see the collection function limit doesn't return any value or a result while the function count returns 10 which is the total number of indexes holding some value. This is because the collection method limit only works with VRAs. If applied to nested table or associative array it will either return null or no value. Here I have demonstrated an example of collection method limit with collection VRE and nested table. Now your work is to tell me what will be the result of collection function limit if it is used with an associative array. If you want you can take help of PL SQL tutorial 57 where I have explained how to create associative array in Oracle database. You can find the link in the description. Also check out the blog to know how to find out the total number of elements left unused for you to store data into a VRA using collection method limit. Link is again in the description. Hope you learned something new and find this tutorial helpful. Do make sure to share it with your friends on your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email or by any means you find convenient and help others in learning. Most importantly, don't forget to like and subscribe. That was the tutorial on PL SQL collection method limit in Oracle database. Thanks for watching. This is Manish from rebellionrider.com.